So we're here to solve this Thermo Sudoku by Bryce Hurt. It has a hot-cold theme, which goes alongside a Thermo concept very well. It also has a really interesting solving path. There are two things you can do at the start with a Thermo Sudoku style puzzle. The first is often to notate along a thermometer path what digits can be, and we'll get to that soon. We might say this is 1, 2, and 2, 3, and 3, 4, and 4, 5, up to 8, 9, because that's 8 digits long for something that's uh, shorter. Can give like a range this has to be one to five two to six up to five to nine for those cells and then you can use other digits and eliminate but the simplest thing to always do in a thermo sudoku is try to look for the digits one and nine because they are going to need to be at the extremes of thermometer shapes or be in unmarked cells so uh, a group like this at the top this top cell or this cell can be a one but no other cell that's in the middle of a thermometer at the end of the thermometer can be and we can also make a claim like the cell at the end or the cell in the middle can be the nine and so those are some this is a very basic start for how to think about ones and nines but an even better place could be looking down this column in this top box the one is in the center uh, column and so I see as I come down here I eliminate these three cells for being the ones these are part of thermometers middle of thermometers there's this one spot left this bottom center box has no circles at all, so it has to be in a single cell that's white. And with those two marked, uh, this bottom space, the only one with a circle, is the one that has to have uh, that thermometer value of 1. We can now come and look at uh, the value 9 and see if there's anything to do there. The first thing is to see that in the center bottom box, there are two ends, which are up here. Those are those limits. Um, there are two, there's an end and an empty cell here, so 9 is in those cells, 9 is in these cells. Uh, I see uh, 9 is going to, because of this, have to be on these termini. Not as much to do there yet. Next thing sometimes to do is look at which boxes themselves will be fully uh, the most constrained. Uh, this box to look be the one that looks like that. And let, let me actually get into what I'm going to talk about by doing what I mentioned before, which is marking along the thermometer the values that some of the bigger sets can do. What we're going to end up seeing as we do this is that the smallest value of the cell here is a 4 and every cell above it is going to be larger. And so ask a clue when you see that this, this box right now looks like it has mostly big digits in it as well as a digit 1. Where do some of the other small digits go like a 2 or a 3? A 2 has to be in one of these unmarked cells because it's not in any of these. It's a fairly small clue. It's going to have to be the next in the, from the bottom in the thermometer. Uh, ask where does a 3 go. Similar logic puts a 3 up here. When we put this 3 up here, it comes over here and influences this clue. Gives us a 2. There's not more we can do right now uh, for this cell, which can be any value from 4 to 9. It will influence the rest, but this is a pretty good start here in the bottom. These two 2s will have to come into one of these cells like this. Um, it can't be further out because the smallest value is going to be there. Uh, let's think about this 3. This 3 uh, can't be down here. The smallest value for this clue right now, if this were 2, is 3, 4, 5. So this is 5 to 8. This is 6 to 9. And uh, not going to be able to do more up there. So a 3 is similarly somewhere in this top row. And that means over here a 3 is in the bottom, and what we should see is a 3 can't be in this cell or that cell because it's too far in the thermometer shape. And so just looking again at extreme digits, we know the 3 has to be at the bottommost position here. We now have 6 digits left, and we have a 5-digit thermometer, so it's pretty useful to mark its options as we go around. And see, for instance, that we have to place a 6 in this column, which will be uh, one of those two cells from these notes. I'm seeing if there's anything else that stands out. Um, these two cells are 6 and 7, so we've actually marked a pair. That's a helpful observation. I'm seeing if there's anything more right now that we can do. I don't see anything right down here at the bottom. So let's start doing some more at the top, and let's begin by taking this big thermometer and marking the pairs that we know. 
And this was actually a deduction that was available at the start, but as I mark all these pairs, I see these two cells that have five, six, and five, six in them. That's going to force those digits to be in just those cells, and so we can eliminate those numbers from other cells. Critically, this cell, which looks like it could be a six or seven, can't be a six. If it were a six, both of these cells have to be fives. So this is seven, this is eight, this is nine. That makes this cell over here a four, five, six. The seven forces this to be a six, which now is going to come back and make this be a five, make this be a four. That finally forces this cell to be the six. Um, the seven can't be in the cell, so it's got to be in the only cell left for it, and this will be an eight, nine pair. We've done a lot on the bottom. Let's see if we can keep uh, using this progress. Let's take this over to the side. We have a 2, a 3, and a 7. It, the critical cell looks to be this one. We know it can't be a 2 because uh, it's got to be one larger than some other digit in the row. So this cell is a 3 or a 7. But if this is a 7, we need to have three more digits afterwards that can fill this in. And I don't see any set of digits that can be. So the 7 has to dodge the thermo thermometer shapes in the space. We now have four, five, eight, nine left in this uh, area, and we're gonna need to get one of the four, five, but not the eight, nine down here. A six is gonna be in the end of this row. Um, last place for it to be. Actually, this is forced to be five and four. Um, so we have a six and we have an eight, nine left. So the six is to the right, eight, nine can be here. We've got a four, five, eight, nine that we can't do much more with yet. But that's a, another set of progress. We put this five in by doing deductions in the box. And so every time we do deductions, let's look back to top. The five makes this be a six, seven, eight, nine. I also see this four looks pretty critical. It's eliminating values in two cells. So this is a three, the bottom one is a five, this is a two, this is a one, the four is in the middle. Now we can take some of this progress over and around the grid. I'm looking at the ones to start, and in this box, for instance, the one isn't in this top row, it's not in the seventh column, it can't be here, so the one is over here. It's something like a one in these positions. The two can't be in the top row, and uh, it's not in the center column, so the two is in one of these spots. I'm trying to see what the smallest digit this can be is um, three is the current look of the smallest digit and four is is ruled out so this could also be five and then you could have six or seven and down to here six seven <clears throat> this becomes another eight nine so if we start with this as small as sorry the, the smallest this can be being three from the digits around it the cell that gets up to here has to be at least five but five six and seven are eliminated from so eight nine eight nine eliminate each other the other 8, 9 is here, and this has to be 5. This is 4. That now gets us to where <coughs> we have uh, actually just 3 and 6 as the options here. And while I write this in, recognize this thermometer is it's circled is smaller than 4 digits in its region. And so uh, 6 is actually instantly eliminated because 7, 8, 9, they're only 3 digits larger than it, not, not 4. That's going to give us this. Um, we've got to be larger than four or five. We, so it's going to be six, seven, but it can't be eight. Um, the digit to the left over here it looks like it can be a four in one of these cells. It can't uh, be a seven. It can't be a nine. I don't think there's enough to notate to do too much over there. This can be a five. This can be a seven. This can be an eight. Not as much to notate there. But we can start to now take some of this information over. We've got two threes placed. The last three is going to be here. We have a two and a two. And so it looks like the options left for the two are these cells. We have two sixes and this six. So there's a six up here. That's probably pretty limiting. Um, one thing to think about is how we're going to get down to the cell, and so I'm seeing this can be a one or two, but this is functionally pretty small. 
once you get to this cell, it's not a one, two, three, or four, so this is something like a five or a six. If it's a five or six, this next one is larger than five, but it's not a five, six, seven, or eight. This cell is a terminus that is very constrained by the other digits around it. It has to be a nine. That's gonna quickly give us these digits below and around the grid, which will help us pretty quickly fill in some stuff. This eight actually now limits one spot left in this upper left box for an eight. We've got an eight here and an eight here. We've got a six in this upper box, uh, just based on Sudoku rules. Seven there, this has a two nine pair. Just mark that in. We're still now thinking through um, next placements. I'm looking now, just at clues I have, and this four sweeping up looks pretty big, particularly when this four sweeps across. So these two terminal cells can have a four. I can't put a four above what would be a clue that pushes down to be a six. So the four is here, the three moves over, the one moves up, the two moves over. This is a way my notation helps me pretty quickly resolve things. Um, this four eliminates this option, so the four is in the top here. This bottom uh, of this box needs a one and two. The one has to be on the right. This space now still needs a five, six, seven, uh, and nine. The nine are on these extremes. The six is now forced actually to be in this cell. The seven is up here and we don't have anything on the nine. There's also a five, six, seven up here and not yet enough to steer it, but we're now into basic Sudoku rules. And so let's think through some of the Sudoku steps. We placed some fours recently, so I'm gonna come back and look at the digit four. Get these, I got a one, five pair here. This is gonna be five, six, seven in some order. Uh, that's not so useful. Looking over here, we have one, three, and nine left to go. So there's one, nine here. One, three, not yet as helpful. This two looks pretty good because it gives a two in the fourth row and the sixth row, and that matches what's over here. So these twos work together to eliminate to the right, and that's gonna put a two here because it can't be there. So this is the only place a two can be in the fifth row. That gives me an eight, which gives me an eight, which gives me a seven. The seven is gonna work over here to give me a seven with a one. That one cancels, gives me a one with a five. That one gives me this nine. These ones leave one spot, one spot, three, three. This last one is a three. We've got five with nine. The nine is over there, so this is nine, five. This nine makes this nine, two makes this two. The sevens eliminate, give seven and five. Seven comes up here to this. The last thermometer step is putting a five below a six. Uh, this five comes over here, five, seven, and nine. And then we finish the puzzle. A lot of Sudoku at the end, but some pretty good thermo steps at the start. The steps we showed included looking at low digits and large, uh, high digits. Ones and nines get us some of these starting points, the two, three coming up. The key that you'll see through my notation is marking some of the either or choices as things come together and that link together cells from the top and bottom in this column that filled it in. We slowly could get other digits. Those digits would interact across the grid. So hot and cold thermometers were always working together. And then, as we said, Sudoku steps at the end. So a fun puzzle, not, not challenging in all respects, but challenging in a few respects and very much an elegant visual theme. Hope you enjoyed the solve, and we'll see you again soon.